Hey guys, it's Chris with Plumetry, and if you are wondering why I look sweaty and gross, and I have a dehumidifier, a humidifier, an air conditioner, and my heating system set up all in one place, well, it's because I want to do a crazy temperature and humidity experiment. Using heat and a humidifier, I got the room to 80 degrees and 80% humidity. Switching from heat to AC, I dropped the temp to 65 and kept the humidity as high as possible at 65%, but the drying effect of an air conditioner made that a challenge. I used the dehumidifier overnight to get down to 65 degrees and 40% humidity, then bumped the heat up by the afternoon to be 80 degrees and 40% humidity. All this started from a story I read in one of my favorite books about a guy named Eddie Taylor who apparently hustled some guys out of 500 bucks doing a four rail bank shot. So here's the rail pattern the players were trying, but no matter how they modified their speed and touch, the object ball always rolled about one diamond too long on the end rail. When a player nicknamed Weenie Beanie finally agreed to the $500 bet, legend is that Taylor covertly had someone prop open the front door, letting cold and wet arctic air into the room. He stalled for a few minutes to let the felt and cushions absorb the moisture, then proceeded to nail the shot on his first try. The book argues the key to this shot is the high humidity. Armed with my climate controlling devices, I set out to test if this is true. I'm gonna start with the Eddie Taylor shot, but I have plans for way more than that. For example, there's a six rail in the corner shot that I find I can make in the winter, but really struggle to get anywhere close in the summer. And I have a hunch that's purely climate related as opposed to the table or the shooter. I also have an interest to test all kinds of other bank shots to see what we can learn about that. I also wanna test our break shot and see how the table spreads and speeds. I also wanna test deflection and throw, table conditions like table speed, how does the felt react, the jump height of the ball. I'm gonna try all sorts of things over the course of a couple videos. So I hope you stick around to see all of it, but for now, let's head to the Eddie Taylor shot. I spend about five minutes trying this shot in each climate, and these are examples of the best case scenario for each. Let's first look at the shot in both dry conditions. As the book says, the shot runs long in the first dry condition. And again, for cold and dry, I found this also ran long, about one diamond. So here's the conditions coming up that would have been from the book, Cold and Wet and it ran long again. However, when we went to hot and wet at a full 80% humidity, look at the ball just run back towards that pocket. Even though I didn't make the shot in my simulated cold and wet conditions, I think this Eddie Taylor story is plausible. Remember, the hot and wet conditions were 80% humidity, but the cold and wet maxed out at 65%, leaving room for the possibility it just wasn't humid enough. When I confirmed that some shots can only be hit in wet conditions, I felt good about my theory that other shots, like my six railer, can only pocket in dry conditions. From trying this shot hundreds of times in the past, I had an instinctual hunch that it either runs short of the pocket or doesn't have the legs or both. Here's what happened during my test climates. While these two patterns require opposite environmental conditions, they rely on the same fundamental principle. Dry conditions open the final rebound angle, but wet conditions tighten the final rebound angle. The Eddie Taylor shot needed the humidity to shorten the angle, but the six railer needs dry rails to extend the angle. 
If we dig deeper, we notice a very similar rail pattern for all climates except for the final rail. In wet conditions, when the ball hits the final rail, we see a tighter rebound angle, almost stun off the rail, and we see more of a topspin rail action, like the ball sort of rolling forward straight off of that rail. But in dry conditions, we see it sort of slip off the rail, and we see more of a corkscrew action on the, on the ball, which sort of seems to like pull it further and further on a wide trajectory, almost in a way the brain doesn't think is possible. As part of this experiment, I also tested one, two, three, and four rail bank shots, but I haven't yet reviewed that footage. I have a hunch that when I do, the relationship of humidity and final rail rebound will be on full display. But that's getting a little bit ahead of the more broad expectations I have for this video. So up next, I want to check out more generalized table conditions and how they react in different climates. So I hope you stick around for that video and more.